Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 122. Thank you so much for inviting me over. I have a lot to share with you. The regular finished objects, works in progress, stack in the back, and also, well, you're just gonna freak out. You see that over there? Love is in the air. Rose bouquet, super, super, super simple. All the hard things are gone, easy to do, as simple as it can be. Plus, they are removable, washable, you're gonna freak out. Now, before we get started, I wanna announce the winner from episode 121, congratulations to Mabel Denny. Congratulations, Mabel. Send me an email, chris.secretyarnray.com, and I will email you my latest pattern. Now, if you want to win a free pattern, all you have to do is have you subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit this button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any more fun stuff just like this. Yes, you have to be a subscriber of the channel and also answer question of the week. Question of the week is, what is your favorite brand and yarn to work with? I love working with Saver from Ice Yarns. That would be my favorite. What I find limits that is the colors. They don't have all the colors all the time. So if you're going for colors, which I am this year, then I'm kind of easing towards favorite from Ice Yarns. Favorite being my favorite? <laughs> Imagine. So favorite is my second shelf down here. It comes in a ton of colors and it's a really nice yarn to work with. It doesn't split, it doesn't fray. It is just dreamy to work with. So tell me your favorite brand and yarn in the comments under this video and I'll be picking a comment from a subscriber to win a free pattern in the next podcast. So let me start with finished objects. Look at these beauties. So these are two different patterns, but very similar, but two different patterns to make these gorgeous, washable, removable roses. A full bouquet of roses. Isn't that great? I love it. Who doesn't need roses like this? I need them everywhere. Yes, we smell them. <laughs> so let me share with you how these beauties are made. This is my first one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I wanted to make something underneath to like cover it, cover the bottom, look like that rose petal. You know, it has that five pointed flower or five pointed leaves at the bottom of the rose. So I just winged one up. This is six points. They work out really easy for six points, but that is not appropriate. That's not how roses look. So if I go to my garden, roses don't look like this. They don't, even though it was a good try. So I thought I would keep this one to show you how it began. I thought that was a good way of doing it. I have since tried a couple other different ways. So this was my next try. So I'm like, I'll do the same thing, but I won't put that little pointy bit at the bottom. I'll skip that. I'll just do a flat dish. So I'll show you that version. That one's better. It's just flat at the bottom with still the, the well, this has seven petals. So I at least got, apparently roses have five or seven petals, not petals, leaves underneath them. But my roses in my garden don't look like that either. It looks nice for the bouquet because, you know, there's a lot of green in between all your flowers, but that's not how it's supposed to be either. But it is cute, right? It's cute for one of those spinning toys, you know, where you spin it? Yeah. It's pretty cute, but still not right. Now I'm gonna have to get one from here <gasps> to show you. So this is the end result. Cute, it looks like a little, a little cupcake, doesn't it? So a little bit of green sticks out from the side. There's five leaves underneath like there should be. It's nice and snug. I love it. So this tutorial is gonna be coming out and a little bloom, a little bud, a little rosebud. So there are two different tutorials, one for the full bloom, one for the rosebud. 
You can make them in all sorts of color combinations, all sorts of quantities. So you have all your big flowers and then you can tuck a little bud in between so that you get the whole effect of a full bouquet. So I'm not sure which one we should do first. You can let me know in the comments. Do you wanna do the full bloom first or do you wanna start with the rosebuds and get bigger later on? Let me know in the comments under the video. Now that brings me to tip of the week. Tip of the week, put a little drop of essential oils, maybe some orange or some rose essential oil, whatever a smell you like to smell, put a little drop just on one of these little leaves underneath there because you will find yourself going over to your roses and giving them a nice big smell every time you see them. And at least if you put on some essential oils, you're not like, oh, I, did I smell them again? You're like, of course I smelled them again because they smell gorgeous. So add a little drop of something that you like the smell of on one of your little leaves underneath your blossoms or your rosebuds. I just wanna hold these. <laughs> be like, yes. <laughs> we should all just be walking around carrying roses. Wouldn't that be great? Hmm. Look at that. So pretty. All right, let me put my roses away. Now, before I jump in to whips, works in progress. Yeah, I'm probably gonna hold it the whole time. <laughs> I just wanna give a big thank you to all of our channel members. Thank you so much for helping me make more videos. If you want to join, there is a little button right beside the subscribe button down below. It says join. You can click on that and pick your level of membership. Speaking of which, Next Monday is our friends and family live chat. So that's the same time as the Friday live chat, but that is on Monday for friends and family members. And also time to book our private video chats for family members. Family members get a 15 minute video call with me, just one-on-one, -on -one, you and me, every month. So go ahead and book that. If you are a family member, you will already see that link on the community page on my channel. Works in progress. Roses, obviously I'm working on roses, but I pretty much have a full bouquet now. Let me show you all the way around. So that is what I'm working on, but I guess I should stop working on them. I have enough, but that's what I want. I still want to make more. They're so fun, but, and I do still have some to put more bottoms on. So that's a little bit of work in progress, but like a self-satisfying work in progress, like really fun to do. If you're enjoying this video, hit that thumbs up. My other work in progress, you can also see right now. Yes, it is the border on my sunflower baby blanket or throw. I've been humming and hawing about it because, let me hold it back here so you can see the colors. Oh, it matches my shirt again, oh my gosh. I match my blanket, I love that. Because I use the cream for the monotone sunflowers, the every other sunflower is just this plain cre cream color, I felt I had to use the same cream, like I wanted to use the colors from the blanket for the border, but it looked drab. It looked drab, it looked sad, it looked old. So I frogged it all back took out that cream that I'd put on, took out the turquoise row that I put on, and did three rows, well four rows actually, of white, just to freshen it up. So that was my big risk, because I know you're not really supposed to mix, you know, the creams and the whites. White, you know, if you do something that's gonna look old, you should keep it looking old. But I just wanted to freshen it up on the edge, and boy, do I love it. So I also knew I had to do one row of the turquoise just to even all that out, so I did. And I have a great plan for the next row of the border. So this is not done, this is another little fun project I get to do. So I have a great idea. I might have to take a few tries at it, but I think I know what I'm gonna do for the rest of the border. And then this border is gonna be a tutorial for any granny square blanket that you want to add some size to, because my blanket is not that big. That's how wide it is, or how narrow I suppose it is, like that. And then it's a little bit wider, or lengthwise, it has a little more length. 
So it's not the biggest blanket, so I wanna put a border on it that helps it be a bit more large, a bit bigger. So that'll be a tutorial coming out also. And of course, you can put that border on any granny square blanket. It doesn't have to be, or any blanket actually, it doesn't have to be the same blanket that I'm using it on. So I do like to keep those tutorials separate. So the blanket will be a tutorial continuous join as you go granny square blanket. And then the border will be separate, like a large border for any granny square blanket. Temperature blanket update. Let me show you that one. So gorgeous, right? Look at all those colors. We had high temperatures. We had some, well, we didn't have low temperatures, but we had some really nice hot weather, perfect for temperature blanket making. And our live temperature blanket catch up, that is the last Tuesday of every month for 2023. That was so fun. So that is just a time where I get to catch up on my temperature blanket. You can get caught up on yours or any sort of work that you need to do, any crochet or even housework, I can keep you company through it. So that is the last Tuesday of every month, which was yesterday. So that was super fun for everybody who joined me. Thanks for hanging out. It was super, super great. And we'll be doing that again at the end of February. So keep an eye out for that last Tuesday of every month. And now your questions. The first question is from Kathy Welch. She asks, do, uh, my question is, do you have a simple, easy cardigan for someone who has never made a wearable? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So I have my party cardi. That is probably the easiest sweater to make. You don't have to put the hood on. I am working on party cardi 2.0, which will be classy cardi, but that is a little bit on hold now in this hot, hot weather I'm having here in Nairobi. There's also the Tammy sweater, which is super easy also for beginners, but probably even easier is the party cardi. Just don't put on the hood if you don't want the hood. Super easy, made to measure, no gauge, no counting your stitches. It's really fun to do. So I will link that up in the cards as well as a description box down below. And thanks for asking. Next question is from Deborah Weger. She says, I have a question. Is there a trick for chevron stitch? For the life of me, I get confused about the third row and give up. Sounds dumb. I know it's not. Lots of people struggle with that trust me. So the trick with chevron is just think of it as hills and valleys. So you have to do something at the top of every hill and you have to do something at the bottom of every valley. So hills get bigger, you make a corner and valleys get smaller, you do a decrease or you just skip a bunch of your stitches depending on the pattern you're doing. So in your head, if you're working on a chevron blanket, just think, what do I do at the top of the hill? What do I do at the valley? What do I do at the top? What do I do at the valley? And then that'll help you recognize where you have to do something different. The next question is from Karen Wright. She asks, how long since you crocheted someone else's pattern or tutorial and what was it? A long time, Karen, a long time. I did the Aerogenia shawl with permission from the designer and also showed you how to read a chart and also enlarge a chart so you're not confused by it. So that is totally worth it. That is the Aerogenia, I think there's even a playlist. So if you Google Secret Yarnery Aerogenia playlist, that will pop up. That was a good one. Then I also did the Northern Diamond Square, which is also fabulous, made by a lovely designer. That was really fun also. I'm not sure which one I did last. Maybe it was a Northern Diamond Square. That was at least four or five years ago. It was a while ago, but that's what it was. Those are my two. Karen also asked, there's another question, what is the best and worst part of being a YouTuber? Best part, hands down, you. Un undeniable, unbelievable, unmatchable. You, just knowing that there are friends around the world, that this whole crochet community is out there, just like meeting you, reading your comments, seeing what you're working on, connecting with you, and ha building a community where we can all share and get to know each other. So that is the best part about it, hands down, it's amazing. The worst part about it, I guess it's also super simple, is just because I do love crochet so much, then it's kind of taken my crochet from something fun I get to do for myself to, oh, well, you have to stop doing that now because you have to film that part. Or, oh, well, you have to stop doing this one because you have to go and write down the pattern. You're going to forget what you were doing. Or if you make something great, and just totally enjoyed it, then you have to go back and figure out what you did to share the pattern, or you have to answer a bunch of questions being like, where's the pattern, where's the pattern, where's the pattern, where's the pattern? You're like, I was just having fun, I don't know. 
So that's the worst part about it, but you are definitely the best part. And our last question is from Denise F. She says, what is your favorite stitch to use for shawls or scarves? And what is your favorite stitch to use for baby blankets or larger blankets? I have a whole playlist. <laughs> I have a whole playlist for super fast baby blankets. I love a good old one row repeat. And I do like where you get to work into spaces because I find that's a lot faster than working into stitches. So there are some really great patterns on that playlist. I'll also put that in the cards down below, cards, cards up above and description box down below. If I had to pick one, it would definitely be the Speedy Granny Ruth just because also for my grandma because I appreciate her knowledge and how smart she was of picking that as her favorite pattern. It works up so fast, it's so stress-free, it's so easy and if you don't want to have tassels you can just turn your work like the Speedy Granny Ruth baby blanket. That one in that tutorial I show you how to do it without tassels so both of those would be my definite go-to for anything plus it doesn't have holes in it. That's super great. Really fast, no holes, really fun. I enjoy that one a lot. So if I had to pick one, it would be that. If I had to pick a bunch, it would be the whole playlist. I love all of those one more repeats. All my Drunken Granny series. The Tipsy, the Dirty, the Granny, the Coronation, the Sunday, the Pin Curl. How many are there? I'm sure I missed some. <laughs> let me know. Let me know the ones I missed in the comments down below. I should know, right? I should write it down. If you have a question for me, let me know in the comments under this video and I can include it in an upcoming podcast. News of the week. I don't have that much news. It's been gorgeous here. It's been glorious. The sun is shining. The plants are growing. The plants are almost, it's almost a bit too hot for the plants. It has been just divine. So super lovely. Everybody's in the groove, in the swing of things. I'm feeling ready for spring and I hope you are too. And now it's time for Stack in the Back. Don't you just love stack in the back? Let me go grab that stack. It's a bright one today. Starting at the top, this is the round granny square baby blanket. One of them, I made a bunch. So what's good about this pattern? Well, obviously the yarn's fantastic. This is Cakes DK from Ice Yarns. This is a super easy pattern to do. What I don't like about making like making things round is the increases always end up in the same spot. You end up making like hexagons. Hexagons? Yeah, hexagons. And I don't wanna do a hexagon, I wanna do a circle. So this is a true circle. If you look at the edge, it is nice and round all the way around. And you don't have to do increases every row. You do a whole bunch of rows without increases, and then you do a row of increases, and then you do a whole bunch of rows without increases. So you're not having to increase every round. It goes really quick because those rounds where you're not increasing, you're just putting three double crochets into each space, boom, 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 all the way around. It's so quick and easy. So that is a really fun pattern to make. It's a written pattern and a tutorial on the channel. There might, I have to do it again. It's on my list of things to do for like a year, two years, a long time. I wanna make another one just to check the pattern because for me, that's how it worked out for me. But people have a problem between row nine and 11. In the video, I say increase. It might be just a problem with editing the video. That could be it, I don't know. Uh, but I, in the video, I say to increase at the end of the row, but there's not an increase at the end of the row, like how it's joined up. So you don't have to worry about that. Just don't increase at the end of that row. But there is, that I think that is a little issue with that one. So if you are gonna make that, just don't stress out, just keep going. We do increases or no increases. And if you do one extra increase or one less increase, it's not gonna make a hill of beans a difference. You're gonna have a fabulous round granny square blanket when you're done, regardless. This gorgeous one, I don't know, I won't say gorgeous. This is my temperature blanket. I do like the border on it, mind you but it's a hot mess. This whole blanket's a hot mess. Let me show it to you. So this is hot colors for hot weather and cold colors for cold weather. This is six months 
of temperatures with single crochet and a six millimeter hook and a size four worsted weighted yarn. So I just did six months because this would just be too big if I kept going. And I did a row of popcorns, those popcorn stitches in there for special days, birthdays and things like that. So that was a really fun blanket to do, but I did have to sew in my ends which kind of led me to not change colors all the time if I really, if it wasn't like a drastic change and also like changing the yarn at the end of the row. Oh. Anyway, I put a big border on it to kind of hide my errors, the errors of my ways. See that border? So I like the border, we call it the watermelon border. I don't know what I did, but it's pretty cute actually. But if you want me to check out what I did or figure out what I did and redo this border on another blanket, let me know. So this is really cute. This is a temperature blanket, but it's also everything not to do with a temper temperature blanket. Don't use a size four worsted weight acrylic. Don't use a six millimeter hook. And don't do just plain single crochet because it gets really big really fast. The linen stitch or the moss stitch, the stitch we're doing for our temperature blanket 2023 will be a lot smaller and more nicer, better than this but I still love it. It's like a good memory to have. <laughs> this is Scarella's outfit. I made this for Scarella. Scarella's my scary mannequin, if you don't know who Scarella is. So let me, I'll, let me pop this on Scarella so you can, you can see her real purpose. Scarella's outfit. So there is Scarella. That is her whole point. So that is the outfit I made for her. Well, she did have her head on because that's, that's the full effect. <laughs> that is what I made for Scarella to wear. I did one of those craft fairs. Craft fair is kind of like a bit, it's kind of like a business fair. It's not really crafty. It's more like entrepreneur -y kind of craft fair. So I did one of those as a fundraiser years and years and years and years ago, seven years ago, a long time ago. And I dressed up Scarella in this outfit because it would obviously look like crochet. You could see her from really far away and be like, oh look, that's crochet, just to kind of stand out front of my tent so people didn't have to like look inside to see what we were all about. They would know, oh look, Granny Squares, that tent is all about crochet. So that is the OG original Granny Square vest. I didn't even put a button on it. I literally just tied it with string because I'm like, never mind. Let me show you the sides. I also had to leave it really open on the sides here to fit Scarella's curvy figure. Next in stack in the back is another round granny square, another round, yeah, round granny square baby blanket. This is the one for the tutorial, including just finishing it off with a really nice, border, just really simple. So single crochet, chaining, skipping, and double crochets, just to make a nice edge around the border. So this is my finished one. I think the other one, I was gonna make it bigger. Maybe, it's a good idea, but no time, no time yet. It's still on my list of things to do. So that is another round granny square baby blanket. This. <laughs> Now I love it and I don't love it. So I love the colors. This inspiration literally was from this glorious bedspread. Like all, I should do it again actually in nicer yarn. Do you see all the colors in there? I loved it. So this was fabric, like a fabric bedspread at a resort I stayed at years and years and years ago. And I just loved it. So I took a picture and I'm like, wouldn't it be great if I could recreate that in crochet? So it's just double crochets. And in between the rows of color on the bedspread, it had like a metallic thread or a metallic row going through in between each color. So I used a metallic yarn from Ice Yarns. I don't even know, it was from Clearance. So I don't know which one it was, but I just put a row of metallic in between each row of my colors. And I loved it. I'm like, it is so great. So I had that, I was working on the border. So I had finished one edge of the border. So I put extra, oh, let me hold it this way. I put extra row of the metallic and then black. And then I hung 
a uh, pom-pom, or I made a pom-pom of the color down below each row. You see that? So this was in holding, in a holding pattern, waiting so I could film the other end of it. Right, so I just put it, I folded it up, put it away so that I could film it. Then I had a little mouse visit me. Couldn't find the little mouse. It was back when I had Tenno. He's my French bulldog, passed away ages ago. Sadly, he was amazing. And I heard, I was like, Tenno, can you get the mouse? I put mouse traps out. I put those sticky glue pads out. I had, and the mouse just never went there. I'm like, where is this mouse? Well, guess where the mouse was? Loves metallic yarn. Doesn't go for the acrylic, goes for the metallic. So some of these stripes, he ate all the way up to where the yarn is. Like he, he literally ate the yarn, ate the metallic yarn. So I got, I grabbed some crazy glue because I don't have any of that fray stoppy stuff here. So I grabbed some click crazy glue and I crazy glued like just where, you know, right at the end where, let me see if I can find one. Well, I crazy glued right up here to keep those from unfraying anymore, unraveling, but I kind of lost the oomph for it. You know, like if a mouse has been at it, does it, it kind of ruined it for me. So I didn't bother filming it. I haven't done anything with it. Now it just stays folded up like a memory of like, oh, that's when you had a mouse. A mouse in the yarnery. Shame, shame, shame. It was horrific. So that if you ever have, or if you ever think you have a mouse near your yarn, go and check your metallic yarn because they love it. They love it. So that is, it was like a chair back cover for one of the pieces of furniture in my house. But now it is just a reminder that I had a visitor that I didn't like and didn't appreciate. And that crazy glue does work. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool to remake. If you're interested in doing that one with me, let me know. Maybe instead of metallic in the middle, we could just use like a white, like color white, color white. Or maybe we could use a tan or a gray or a black. Anyway, let me know what you think about that in the comments under this video. And I gotta put away my stack. What was your favorite one? So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and I'm waiting for you in that video right there. Stay hooked. <laughs>